Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. I welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. As several years ago, after suffering from a heart attack, a followed by triple bypass surgery, uh, my friend Jack started to cook at home. In order to gain better control of his diet, uh, increasing his fiber consumption, and reducing daily calorie intake. Uh, he told me it was miserable. Uh, he missed his usual fast and processed food diet, uh, particularly fried chicken uh, that he used to eat every day. After he adopted my fast cooking system, he learned to stir fry chicken, but the results were not the way how he liked it, because he preferred the chicken to be breaded. Uh, so I showed him how to create a light breading by shallow frying the chicken, uh, which is not as labor intensive and less time consuming as deep frying the chicken. Uh, so in this video, I would like to go into a deep dive on how to shallow fry chickens. It is really simple and straightforward, but there are some little tricks that I could share with you. Uh, the wok actually is a very versatile cooking utensil. Of course, we think about the wok is doing stir frying, but you can also do other type of frying in the wok, and this including pan frying, uh, deep frying, as well as shallow frying. Uh, so what are the differences between these four types of frying? Okay, first let's take a look at stir frying. Uh, with that, you will never be able to create a crispy exterior. Uh, the food could get a little bit burned on the outside, but it will never be crisp. Now, pan frying turned out to be very similar to stir frying, except in the case of pan frying, uh, you do not stir the contents. Uh, in this case, you will uh, have the surface of the food ingredients slightly burnt, but you will never create a crispy texture. So if you want the food ingredient to have a crispy texture, uh, you have to either deep fry or shallow fry the ingredients. Uh, in order to achieve this texture, you will coat the food ingredients with either cornstarch or flour. And the question that you might have is which one is preferable? Uh, the decision in selecting to coat the food ingredient with either cornstarch or flour are uh, based on how thick you want the breading. For deep frying, flour is used to achieve a thicker crust. However, for a lighter and crispier breading, it appears that cornstarch uh, does a better job. For thicker breading, you use more flour uh, to create a batter. Uh, consequently, in this case, the deep fry ingredients will be higher in calories. Uh, the difference between deep frying and shallow frying rests on the amount of oil that is being used. A more oil is needed in deep frying because the food ingredients immerse completely in the oil. In shallow frying, only a small amount of oil is needed, just enough to cover the cooked surface. And the food ingredients will be fried on one side at a time, and then it will be turned over to fry the other side. Uh, the process will be more labor intensive and the result is less even. And the benefit is only a small amount of oil is needed. Uh, this approach saves oil usage, particularly for occasional frying. Uh, by using only a limited amount of oil to create a light breading on the food ingredients, uh, the shallow frying method uh, will result in less calorie than deep frying. Shallow frying and deep frying are not equivalent. They have different purposes. A shallow frying has only limited applications. It is not suitable to fry any food ingredients that is large and bulky. A shallow frying is only suitable for food ingredients that have been thinly sliced. And despite this limitation, a shallow frying can create many of the culinary characteristics of deep frying and it has many uh, distinct advantages. In many ways, you can consider shallow frying to be a compromise between deep frying and stir frying. Uh, perhaps one of the most important advantages of uh, shallow frying uh, is that you can use the chicken in the advanced prepping for both shallow frying and stir frying. Uh, this greatly increases the efficiency as well as the effectiveness of advanced prepping. 
Uh, the primary goal of shadow frying uh, is to create a crispy texture on the surface of the chicken. Uh, this is frequently also known as a crust and could be created by different methods. Uh, in deep fried ingredients, this crust usually is created by something known as a breading. Uh, this breading is usually composed of uh, carbohydrate that derive from grain-based material uh, such as flours, cornstarch, or even bread. Uh, they are well suited for deep frying because they lend themselves well uh, to create a crispier layer outside the food ingredients. Uh, in the case of shallow frying, you want this uh, breading to be thin enough uh, that allow the heat to uh, transfer in cooking the food ingredient but thick enough to create a crispy covering. And cornstarch turned out to be ideal to be used as a breading in shallow frying. It works well for chicken, pork, fish, and shrimp. A cornstarch is very effective even in a smaller amount. For example, here, one tablespoon of cornstarch is used to coat eight ounces of chicken. Another advantage of this shallow frying technique is that you can add seasonings uh, to the cornstarch coating. Uh, this adds flavor to the chicken to match other ingredients in the dish. Uh, the seasoning agents that I use for this purpose uh, is represented in my masala daba. Uh, this include mushroom seasoning, garlic powder, minced onion flakes, a lemon pepper, ginger powder, cumin, and paprika. Coating the chicken and this seasoning agents require only several minutes after the chicken has been thawed out. Jack told me that this shallow frying chicken is definitely not the same as the deep fried chicken such as chicken tender or chicken nugget that he used to like. The shallow fried chicken has their own attractive aspect and he likes them both. The shallow fried chicken usually takes just a few minutes to cook, as in comparison with deep fried chicken, it usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to cook some shallow fried chicken using my 14-inch Cuisina stainless steel wok. This wok has an advantage over other type of woks because it has a large flat bottom surface area, which measure 9 inches across. It can be used like a small frying pan, and it is large enough to lay out about 8 ounces of thinly sliced chicken. An advantage of shallow frying the chicken uh, in the wok is that after you have shallow fried the chicken, uh, you can stir fry them directly. Using a pair of long handle tongs to spread out the chicken is very useful. Uh, reducing the moisture in the chicken uh, will be very helpful uh, to prevent splattering during the frying process. Uh, if the chicken contains too much moisture after you thaw them out, uh, use a piece of paper towel to dry them first uh, before you add the cornstarch and the seasoning agents. Uh, seasoning the wok before you add the chicken using my spot seasoning method will prevent the chicken from sticking to the surface of the wok. Uh, depending on the heat capacity of the stove, uh, you might want to adjust the heat uh, so that it will not burn the chicken. It normally takes about 60 to 90 seconds uh, to fry the chicken into a golden brown texture. Uh, by this time, you use a pair of tongs to turn the chicken around uh, to fry the other side. I have a tendency wanting to take a peek at them during the frying process, uh, but the best thing to do is to just let them fry about 30 to 45 seconds before you take a look. This usually provides better results. Here is advantage of shallow frying the chicken in the wok because now I switch to use my spatula to stir fry the content. This is followed by adding frozen vegetables to the wok. At this point, I stir fry all the contents together to complete the cooking of this dish. So in summary, these are the tips that I would like to provide to you. Number one is that slice the chicken thinly. Number two, if the chicken has too much moisture associated with them, dry them with a piece of paper towel. Coat the chicken with cornstarch 
and also the desired seasoning agents. A used to walk with a large flat surface area such as the Kusina 14 inch stainless steel walk. I use just enough oil to cover the flat surface of the walk. I season the wok up using my spot seasoning method before adding the chicken to the wok. I use a pair of long handle tongs to spread out the chicken on the surface of the wok. I fry each side of the chicken for about 60 to 90 seconds until they turn golden brown. Add other ingredients that you want uh, to cook this dish uh, by stir frying everything together. Jack told me that the chicken uh, cooked by this shallow frying method has much better flavor and texture than just plain stir frying. Uh, this method is simple, straightforward, and time efficient. Uh, Jack includes chickens in almost all his meals now. And he usually consumes only about uh, two to three ounces of chicken in the meal. He uses this basic template to cook his chicken and then he combines it with different vegetables. I post a video each day uh, to introduce as well as to help people to adopt my fast cooking system. A way the word fast is the acronym for flavor chasing, advanced prepping, stir frying, and template based cooking. Uh, with the goal to make home cooking practical, efficient, and fun uh, so it can become part of your daily routines. If you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.